Thank you. Um, I wanted to, and I'm gonna, I won't have time to do it all right now. I'm gonna also use three minutes at the end, but I wanted to read you some excerpts from the American College of Pediatricians on what's best for children and their position statement that was just put out in February, 2024. And the reason I want to try to um, share this information, and I'm also gonna send it out to the board um, after tonight so that you can have more time to digest is with the removal of policy 720 and relying on policy 103 and different um, ARs that encourage or support social interventions for students who define themselves as transgender. I think it's extremely important to have a, um, a good grasp of what you are supporting. So I'm gonna quickly hit some highlights. This is from the abstract. Depression and suicidal ideation. Before and after gender affirming therapy, adolescents who have gender identity incongruence are at a higher risk for psychopathology than their peers who identify with their biological sex. Previous adverse childhood experiences may play a major role in that psychopathology and needs to be explored in helping these patients. There are no long-term studies demonstrating benefits nor studies evaluating risks associated with medical and surgical intervention provided to these adolescents. There is no long-term evidence that mental health concerns are decreased or alleviated after gender-affirming therapy. Many individuals who have been treated later regret these interventions and seek to align their gender identity with their sex because of the risks of social, and that is what we're talking about here in this environment, and it goes on medical and surgical. Many European countries are now cautioning against these interventions while encouraging mental health therapy. To describe, uh, and then I'm gonna continue on, to describe sex as assigned at birth is inaccurate and misleading. The American College of Pediatrics is very concerned that parents along with healthcare and educational professionals who support the transgender transition of children and adolescents are in fact contributing to increased depression by appearing to validate to the children that something is wrong with their body and biological sex. In addition, social transitioning, which they define as a change in name, pronoun use, hairstyle, and clothing to more closely match the child's perceived sexual identity, um, which is incongruent with their biological sex, social transitioning leads to persistence of gender dysphoria. When one considers brain development of the young child with its neuroplasticity, each thought, behavior, and experience affects the brain's microstructure and function. I'll be back, thank you.